Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So Nerf Rival has become quite a staple in the Nerf hobby because it was honestly one of the most innovative ammo types that we'd seen in a very long time. But where did that ammo type start from? The answer is this. How does it hold up? Let's find out. So this is the Nerf Rival Apollo. It was released in 2015 and was the first release of the Rival series alongside the Zeus, which came a little bit later. The Zeus basically being a strife reskin in the Rival line, this basically being a Rival Retaliator, which is very cool, especially because it loads mags through the grip, which is something that I'm sure everybody wanted and they got it here. And it was honestly a really well-received blaster at the time. At the time. Yeah, this Nugget's reputation hasn't really stood up over time, and I'm going to try and explain why in this video, but first of all, we kind of got to start out with the design. The blaster is very basic looking. It is a blue rectangle with a grip. It's a blue rectangle with a grip. It does have some design details, like these grills here in this sort of triangular pattern on here that makes it look like this should like be a pump action or something like that, but nope. It is just a rectangle, it's got a grip, it's got a rail on the top, and a bolt handle prime action thing. I don't know. It, it looks super basic. But honestly, that's not a bad thing. I think the blaster looks very cool being this sort of basic pistol. I've got two, and I gotta say, it feels very fun to hold and dual wield these. In fact, let me show you what that looks like. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This... This is fun. You feel like a badass, even if you can't actually use them both at the same time. Well, you... You can, but it's like one of those things where it's like, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And it's really, really loud when you dry fire it. This one is super dusty, but it doesn't really matter. I think the design of this blaster looks okay, even when you turn it around and there's absolutely no paint. No rival, no nerf, no stripes, no nothing. The only thing that's there is what's etched into the plastic, so at the very least, it says XV700, standing for 157. Seven, wait, they just add a hundred onto the end. That's always been a thing with Rival. I don't know why they do it, but they do, and it's really weird. We gotta go to the ergonomics. Uh, yeah. This might be the reason this blaster isn't popular anymore. This grip is way too big. And I understand that they were trying to make room for the magazine to fit inside, but good grief, is this grip huge. It is gigantic. It isn't really the size of the grip that makes it so bad, but it's just that it is like a cylinder, and it is massive, and they tried to put details on it that just made it even bigger, and it's like, it's too big. It's actually uncomfortable to hold this with my hands for the most part. I can use it for a little bit, a little while, but then my hand starts to strain because the grip is so large, but that isn't the worst part of the ergo. The worst part of the ergo is this godforsaken priming handle. Look at this. It's like a hook bolt action thing, and you bet with this heavy prime, it creates a dent in your hand. I used this once as my primary, and there was an actual physical dent in my hand from the bruise that this thing created because the priming handle is so unrelentingly painful. Why is it so painful? Why couldn't they have just done like a top slide thing, like a shotgun thing but inverted, and have this be the mechanism to hold that in place? That would have been awesome. But instead they gave you this rough, sharp, like it isn't even filleted, it's actually like rather pointy. Like you could take somebody's eye out with it if you were to hit them with it. It's hard and there's no smooth edges on it. It is the worst priming handle I've ever used, and it's actually really painful to use after just a short while. The only way to kind of make it manageable is to take these two bottom fingers and wrap them around it and pull it back and then push it forward with the bottom of your hand. That works well enough, but even then that strains your fingers after a while. There's just no way to save this priming handle. In order to make this thing work, you basically have to get a 3D printed pump action kit for this. And I hate when you have to buy mods for a blaster just to make it functional. You should be able to use the stock blaster and be able to have fun with it. I know that there are people who do like this priming handle. I am not one of them. Another thing that doesn't make sense is why this is in a stock. Look how far back it goes. It is the size of a nerf stock, but there's no nerf stock 
on it. I end up using it as a stock a lot, mainly just to brace this stupid bolt handle thing when I actually do pull it back, but that doesn't make it comfortable. It just makes it like something that you can use as a stock, but you probably shouldn't if you actually want to enjoy using it. I. I have no idea. Let's just get to the functionality. This blaster basically works like a retaliator. You take a magazine, you push it into the grip, it locks, you prime it, you fire once. It only has single shot, it doesn't have slam fire, and I love the way that they make the magazine fit into the grip. That is cool, and it's actually pretty realistic to firearms, especially like handguns and stuff like that. It is fun to reload this. It only takes like a few minutes to actually get used to the action of reloading that, especially because the mag release is right here on the bottom of the grip. You grab it, push it with your thumb, it comes right out. It's very easy to do, you can do it very quickly and very effectively in battle, especially if like you have a whole bunch of mags on your rig and you can tactically reload them. Oh, it's out. It's in. I can keep firing. It's a very nice way that they made this work. I love that about it. Oh my gosh. We got a firing test. Not put the magazine in backwards. Pain in my hand. Shoots real hard. Test and firing. And firing the test. Try not to jam the stupid priming handle singing about guns because guns are practical and very very fun i've run out of balls so yeah the blaster is fine but there are a number of problems with it which is kind of why it faded into obscurity even with stuff like the hades which arguably have equally terrible priming handles i would probably take the hades over this because the hades only hurts after you've shot it 30 or 40 times this one basically hurts immediately there is no grace period when you start using this blaster. The first shot will hurt your hand, and any shot after that will just make that pain a million times worse. But I can very much excuse Hasbro because this is a $20 blaster on release. It's shooting over 100 FPS out of the box. It was shooting a new ammo type. It was very experimental, and it was the first, like, it was the first blaster that was using this ammo type. I was very afraid that future Springers were going to be doing this, but luckily, that's not what happened we got the Atlas, and the Atlas was honestly a lot better than this was for some purposes. For some purposes it was worse, but that's besides the point. And we got the Chaos, and then after that it just got better and better and better and better. But it just really sucks that the original blaster just isn't very good. If only there was a release fix for this. Oh wait, Hasbro did release a fix for it. I'll review this one in two days. If you want to buy one of these, I think you can still get them. If you can, then I'll link them in the description below. With that said, Thanks for watching! Bye.